I just got in the mail. New helmet. Let's go. Hey, it's Pete with Backdraft Bikes coming at you with another review. Uh, this year, I decided I wanted to get a different style helmet. I'm going to still keep my Climb Cryos Pro 2 that I have. It has the visor on. I really like it. But Climb was uh, advertising a really good deal on one of their new lines of helmets, and I wanted to give it a shot, especially because of my new S1000 that I've got. The visor looks a little funny. It looks a little out of place. It's not quite a true adventure off-road bike to be wearing, you know, the Nimrod 5 on. So I'm going to check out this helmet. Uh, what I have done is I've gotten this directly from Climb. They tend to have really good deals. And uh, I went on their website and found it and I said, yes, I'm going to do it. So this is the TK1200 and I got it in the Architect Red Rock Carbon. Uh, they have a couple different varieties. I am of the 2XL variety. They have a nice sizing guide on their website. If you go on there, I, I recommend doing that because uh, you don't want to get obviously the wrong size helmet. Uh, I don't particularly have a huge head but I find that the 2XL from Climb seems to fit me just about right. I tried an XL and it was a little bit tight in the forehead area for me, probably just due to the shape of my head. What do I like about this helmet? I've got it out of the box right now and open. I've actually gone ahead and already installed my intercom system in it too, which I'm gonna talk about in just a second. This is a modular helmet. So this allows you to be able to close and open uh, just like a half shell, but it gives you the full protection on your jaw or your mandible that a full-size helmet would. So that is a super cool deal. The look of the helmet is awesome. It's shiny. You can see it's actually real carbon fiber. And I just like the red accent. I kind of would have liked a fully black helmet, but they didn't have one in stock uh, in the 2XL size. And with COVID still causing problems with getting stuff, this is the one that they had available. So this is the one I got. Uh, it has some really nice venting on it. The very top of it has a pretty large vent that opens and closes. And then, of course, you have a chin vent that's right here, up and down. Just like uh, Climb's other models, they're in this, both in the same place. Separately uh, adjustable windscreen, or, or uh, visor, I should say, allows it to go down into the almost lock position. So like when you're riding, you need just to defog a little bit. Um, and it's very solid feeling the way it locks in and out. It, it doesn't feel flimsy. Uh, I have ridden with this already a little bit, and I was happy with the fact that the visor stayed in place even at uh, highway speeds. The opening and closing is actually quite easy. There's just a little notch right here that you push on. And when this is on your head and you're not filming with one hand, it's actually quite easy to pop, quite easy to pop open. There we go. There is a chin screen on this as well. Just keep the wind off your chin a little bit. And you can see the inside. This does not have the chiroid honeycomb stuff. This is actually traditional uh, polystyrene or styrofoam of some sort. Um, putting in this uh, intercom system, uh, I do have the Cardo, I think this is the Bold. Um, I have a video on how to install it in this helmet, but. Uh, I did like this helmet for installing because of the fact that it actually had cutouts for the speakers and the wiring. And in the very back of the helmet, right here, there's a large pocket for uh, some of the other units that have like a, a battery pack with them. This does not have the Fidlock buckle like the other helmet has, but this one non nonetheless is quite easy to put on. All you're gonna do is stick it in and it ratchets shut. Now to take this off, it's easy. You just got the red pull tag, which is synonymous with all Climb's helmets, and it just pulls out very easy. So there's no threading of the needle like uh, an old style helmet would have. This helmet is also extremely light because of the carbon fiber. Uh, so that is super refreshing. You're gonna ask me what the exact weight is and I'm gonna have to put it in the video. The only downside to this helmet that I've found so far, before we even talk about riding with it on, is the fact that the cheek pads are are pretty tight against the head. And this is kind of common with modular style helmets. You can't put this helmet on in the closed position, at least I can't. So what I'm gonna do is just open it up and it's kind of the way I leave it when I'm not wearing it. 
And then when putting this on, you're gonna actually wanna take your, your uh, straps and pull this helmet and kind of flex it out just a little bit to get it around your cheeks and the ears. So you can see right there, um, it is extremely snug fitting. Do the bite test on the cheeks. You know, you can tell how tight your helmet is. You should just barely be biting uh, the inside of your cheeks with your teeth if the helmet is sized properly. You don't want it too loose. Easily uh, able to connect the ratchet and we're good to go. And then when you close it, um, it doesn't close on its own down. You actually just have to push this button to disengage the lock. Perfect. I suppose you can force it down, but it seems to come down a little easier if you just push the button. Now, here is the big thing that everybody's asking about this helmet, is the transition shield. Now, it is not super warm out right now. In fact, uh, there's still snow outside, but it is about 50 degrees today. It's a beautiful spring day. Uh, these shields are absolutely unbelievable. They negate the need to even wear sunglasses unless you're riding into the surface of the sun. When it's cold though, the transition shields tend to take a little bit longer to transition, <laughs> pun intended. But when it's warm, it's very, very quick, maybe less than five seconds from full to dark. Let me walk outside with this. We're in my garage right now, but we'll walk out into the full sunlight and you'll see what I mean. This is not a time lapse. You can see it's already starting to darken. And if I were to go directly into the sun, you can see how quickly it darkens very fast, almost instantaneous. It's a nice helmet. The transition shield, I, <laughs> I don't think I'd ever be without one um, at that, at this rate. So I go back in and remember it is a little cold right now. We just give it a second. It's slower on the defrost, if you will. It's slower turning back from uh, the tinted variety to normal because it's cold. So you can see after a good 10 seconds or so, it's still pretty dark, still pretty dark. Although it's not dark enough that I can't see. I think you can kind of see my face through it a little bit, not really but I can see okay in here. It's not super duper, super duper tinted out. You can see my face right there. Um, while I'm on the visor, I'll just share one other thing. The lowest position right here that gives you a little bit of ventilation in, and then it locks down if you need it to. So there is that little detent. I enjoy riding like that, especially when um, it's chilly out and you need a little bit of airflow. Now to get, the, to get this off again, um, I usually leave the visor down. I'm going to flip it up. I'm going to just pull that red strap just like that. And then I'm going to just take the helmet straight off. I'm going to use these straps again, though, just to kind of lift it up and over. So it's a little bit tight fitting around the, around the cheekbones, but you kind of want that in the helmet. You don't want your head bouncing around uh, if you get into an accident. So uh, how do I rate this helmet as far as noise goes? Well, I have to say, based on my other climb helmet that I have, which is more of an adventure style helmet with a lot of vents, this helmet is super quiet. If I were to compare this helmet to some of my others, like the HJC that I've had, uh, and even the showy helmets that I've had, I'd say this helmet is the quietest of all of the ones I've ever owned. It, I know it sounds subjective, um, but it is my opinion, and I'm not getting paid to share this. So, uh, I really did like the comfort of this helmet after riding for at least an hour. Uh, very, very comfortable, and the noise level was definitely manageable. Now, on the S1000 that I have, it does have a full aftermarket header and race muffler on it, so it's quite loud. Uh, and I found that it was not obnoxiously uh, droning inside of the helmet, and the wind noise was, um, it was very bearable, it was very tolerable. The Helmet itself, I think, is designed more for the touring rider. I think it's designed to give you a lot more distance 
and I didn't feel the same uh, ridges in my head that I get from my uh, other climb Creos Pro 2 helmet uh, because the ventilation channels are just much different in this helmet. It's, it's spread out more for uh, longer rides and um, not as good a ventilation as some of those uh, sport helmets are for off-road purposes because you're going to be sweating a lot more, right? Well, I look forward to using this helmet this season for a couple of my long trips. I think I am going to take it with me uh, on a trip I have planned that's a couple thousand miles. Uh, I really do like the visor um, for uh, riding, especially at dusk and dawn, because it just allows you to position your head and uh, block out the sun. And of course, this helmet, it doesn't have that. It's, it's not designed for that. It's not an adventure helmet. But uh, I do have to say I'm, I'm in love with the weight on this helmet. I think it looks super sharp and uh, it's very comfortable. The transition shield too, definitely worth the money. If there's an option of not getting it, I would splurge and get it. Uh, you, you won't be disappointed. And as far as the scratch resistance goes on these, they're actually pretty good. They're actually pretty good. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this video helps you make your decision. I'm gonna throw some links down in the description for our affiliate program. It helps us keep these channels going. Uh, as always, ride safe.